Hey everybody, so I'm going to talk about relative file paths and nuke uh, for this video. And this is going to be Mac OS X version and the Unix version uh, since they use file paths that have this kind of slash versus uh, Windows which uses file paths with this kind of slash. So if you're a Windows user, um, you know, you'll understand how to use your uh, file pathing, uh, just, you know, replacing your slashes. Anyways, let's move on. So. We're going to look at um, using this kind of directory structure where somewhere on a drive you have a folder that has all of your compositing projects and in this uh, you have you may have many projects in this one we're going to use project XY and it's got a couple folders inside of it for your comps and images and also um, in this comp projects you have maybe you've got a shared elements directory. Um, so let's quickly define what uh, the difference, uh, differences are between absolute file paths and relative file paths. Right? With absolute file paths, every single file path begins at the topmost um, portion. So on your hard drive uh, on Mac, you have slash. That is the very top directory. Um, and inside slash, you have uh, a variety of directories, but you know, users, your name, desktop, blah, 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 all the way to your project file. Now, every time you use absolute paths to define where something is, <clears throat> you start at the very top and trickles all the way down to find your uh, files that you're using within your project. Now, the problem arises when you take that entire project directory, <clears throat> this guy here, and you bundle it up, or even this guy here, and you zip it up and you take it somewhere else and you plunk it down on some other drive, perhaps a network drive somewhere, and all of a sudden this beginning is not this beginning anymore. You've lost that absolute connection to where this exists on the drive. So how would we get around this? Well, we get around this using relative file paths. And relative file paths um, take a different approach, whereas this is sort of saying, okay, you know, I want to find uh, a store right and you ask Google where the store is and it says oh well if you're on planet Earth then you want to go to North America and then you want to go to the United States and you want to go to Pennsylvania and you want to go all the way down to this place where the store is and what we want to do is we want to use relative file paths first we want to say where are we and then if we say where's the store we can say oh it's right across the street from me right so that's how relative file paths work so we know where our directory is that our project is so from there we can go up directories and into directories. And as long as we pick up that entire structure and move it, it's always going to be right because it doesn't have to know anything beyond the topmost directory that it chooses to look at. Okay, so let's, let's look at how this works. Well, in Nuke, we can get the name of this directory that our project is in by using this button, script directory. Now let's pop over to Nuke and take a look. Um, if I hit the S key, um, I have it already filled in here. Let me delete that. If I hit the S key, I get my project settings. Um, when I'm hovering over the node graph, right? We all know that. I X this out. I hit S. Boop. There we go. Project directory. Our project settings. And in here, we have our standard project settings that we would use. And we've got this option here, script directory. This button will fill in our project directory. Now, we can set this explicitly here. Um, but I find this really handy to just hit this button. Boop. And we get... Uh, a simple Python call that calls is a obviously a Python call. It calls a uh, nuke extension to the Python, and it returns script directory, right? And if we were to grab this, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to head over to our script editor and put it in here and hit return. You can see that the result for this, right? It returns the absolute file path for this, for wherever this is saved. Now, the wonderful thing about this is that this will return the absolute file path no matter where it is, right? We can pick it up and move it, and if we uh, open that, that file and uh, run this script again, it will give us the new, uh, the new path to our directory. All right, so how do we leverage this, All right? Well, we can take a look here and say, <clears throat> Just as, this is just pretty much saying what I just said. It has, this is pointing to here, 
right? Our project is saved here, our, our script is saved here. This is our script directory, right? And this is the command that calls it. All right, so once we know our script directory, we can go anywhere that's relative to our script directory and our entire project is portable. It works like this. Um, if we wanted a, a file that's within the same directory, uh, we just put a slash at the end of our uh, script here and then we say the name of whatever we want, in this case checkerboard. right? So if we pop back to Nuke here, we can see that when, I, when we did call this, uh, it returned it without that final slash. So that really is just the name of the directory. So if I were to get a read here, or I'll just copy this one here, it makes it simpler. Copy and paste. I grab this, and I go here, paste, and in my folder, it's actually a PNG, checkerboard.png. There it is, right? So there's my checkerboard, okay? And that's my relative file path to my checkerboard, right? So here we can see I have my two cats loaded. One of them um, is with an absolute path, and one of them is with a relative path. Now, what are these dot dots, right? This is the next step in this, right? How do we actually navigate around? The checkerboard was easy because if we look back at how our directory is structured, it's actually in the same folder as our comp, but that's bad organization. So if we want to move out of comps and into other directories, well, how do we do that? Well, we use a dot dot slash instead of any kind of directory name. And that way we can move up one, two, or even three directories or more. We can just keep going as long as you can keep track of it uh, in your head um, or as you're kind of solving it then you can always keep moving up directories. So for example, in this case, if we wanted to get to cutecat, we'd use a single dot dot slash to get us outside of our comps directory. So here I've color coded things to show you how we move from one to the next. Yellow gives us our comp directory. The dot dot slash moves us out to the green. Um, images is the folder we want to go to, so that's purple, and cutecat is of course the file we're after. And again, if we wanted to move to our elements directory, we just kind of worked it twice. Once out, once out, and back to our elements. Okay, And I've got that here. You can see it's the same exact structure. If we are in this folder, we go dot dot slash, dot dot slash, and then into... Oh, sorry. I think I screwed this up. Um, I wanted this to be in our comp projects directory. That's the problem. So. Here we are, we would come dot dot slash, dot dot slash, elements. Dot dot slash, dot dot slash, elements. There it is, same thing. You get the point. Let's take a look at it in Nuke. So here's our cat, right, and our cute baby kitten. And so how do we convert this to a relative file path? Well, first of all, we need that script directory. So I'll hit S and I'll just grab this and copy it. And typically the way I do this is I'll navigate to this first, I'll pick my pick my location, grab the spot, and I'll just run over here and I'll say, okay, so I've got cute cat, and that's in images, and I'm going to grab here, and I'm gonna paste my comp, and I know that it's slash dot dot to move us out of our comp directory, and it helps to look at this, right? We're here, we're gonna go here, and then, I'm sorry, we're here, we wanna go here, that's our dot dot slash, and here's our images and cute cat. So dot dot slash images cute cat. So when I hit return on that, we don't see a change. Now the only change now is that this is completely protected from if we move our directory around. Right? So same thing for that grime. If we were to read that grime in here, right? I know it's called grime. And again, I would just navigate to it first. So I'll go here, come up. And we can even count it out, right? So we can say, okay, we're here. So we go dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, elements, grime.png. Yes. So here we are. I'm going to grab our script directory. And I'm going to go into here, paste, dot, 
slash dot dot slash dot dot turn right didn't lose it we've got it all so we've got our grime so this is a really powerful tool um, really simple little thing uh, and, and you know it's a little annoying sometimes to be always um, trying to find your way around it and things like that but believe me the little bit of work is totally worth it and you'll get much faster at it as you use it so I hope that's really helpful for you um, and I hope that you find uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, ease of use with this and uh, good luck <laughs>